Welcome to Two Old Guys Talking About Stuff. My partner, John Coleman, and I are, we just talk about stuff all the time. And We're every so often we share, guys, yeah. we share it with our audience. So, John, what kind of stuff do you want to talk about today? Time. Time is of the essence, to quote oh. Art Kirsch. <laughs> well, so you know it, what? I guess there's no time like the present. To uh, okay, that too. There's okay. probably, uh, Although time could, is a subject uh, that's immemorial, as they say. Right. As, um, a matter of, as a matter of fact, with time, you've always got a second chance. <laughs> time, as we get older, time is really important to us, I think. And it's, uh, I'm, I was just this weekend questioning, I think the word is fungibility of time. In other words, how, how time can change uh, relative to our lives, relative to people we know. I just uh, went to a memorial yeah. for my cousins, a memorial of life, wonderful ceremony, great gathering. Uh, my co first cousin's husband died about a week and a half ago. Mm. And they had, and he was a great guy. He was 75, died in his sleep, which is a wonderful way to go. I, I noticed, by the way, as an aside, that uh, people under 50 don't talk about death, first of all. And then they don't talk about death in realistic terms, like, well, he died doing what he loved, or things like, he went so peacefully, you know, they just don't want to deal with it at all. But when you get to a certain age over 50, 60, maybe 70, when you're, when you're looking at death as a reality, I think we're more honest about death. But that's another aside. What I wanted to, to mention was that um, it was great to see my cousin, who I hadn't seen in, um, it turns out, probably 10 years. Um, but her cousins, sisters, nieces, nephews, things like that, and, and her husband's family, just a wonderful ceremony of life um, and really uh, filled with great stories. But what struck me, among other things, is that it seemed like no time had expired. Now here, I, we've been talking about, well, let's get together. Well, we've got to go, let's do lunch and get to, they're in Los Angeles, I'm in San Diego. So it's not, you know, something that's easy to plan. And our lives have different tracks and we're doing different things. But it did seem to me that all that time that we've been talking about getting together and haven't gotten together seemed like, all of a sudden, because he's gone, it seemed like years, and it's probably been half a year, six months. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, seeing my cousins and nephews and nieces, who I haven't seen in 10 years, we get together, and how are you, and how's your mother, and all this, and what are you doing, and meeting meeting the, the new children, great-grandchildren great from somebody's cousin, seemed like yesterday. It's, it's like no time had expired. So I think time is a, is a phenomenon more than anything else. So, so and I'm wondering if, it's, if this is all because of our age. So, you know, is, so, so may, maybe um, uh, you, you have struck a nerve with some of the audience uh, in that uh, these are people that you, you like. And so we're going to stick with relatives for the moment. They're like, but they're not in your your normal circle. It's not like when uh, you and I grew up in New York and we were always near legions of, of family members. So there right. would be dozens of opportunities probably every year that we'd get together with some or all of them, whether sure. it be uh, a Christmas or a Hanukkah or birthdays yep. or, or yeah. wedding anniversaries and things like that. And it just it, it happened. But now that we're more spread out, uh, even though we might keep in touch on social media, not for many of us, not so much anyway, with the older generations, it's uh, it, it's almost as if it's like, so where does the time go that comes in between all these times we get together now right. more frequently because somebody has passed as, yeah. we, as people are getting older? And uh, is there some guilt or, or something that maybe a call to action. And so uh, let me share with you um, uh, one particular story. Well, you know that I, I used to see my cousin uh, Don 
Yes, uh, I remember Donna, yeah. Every week for 10, 10 or 15 years, we were best friends. Uh, and we would uh, see each other. We'd find some place to go get coffee and play a couple of games of backgammon. And that was like a, a weekly routine. And then all of a sudden, uh, right. he was gone too soon, uh, probably yeah. at the age of 70. And uh, I miss him dearly. But I do call, although we never got together as families that much, um, I do call his uh, uh, widow uh, maybe once every three or four months uh, just to see how she's doing. She's got a wonderful local family. So yeah. I know that, that she's doing okay with that. Although, you know, she, like everybody else, has her own maladies and, and adjustments and, and sure. what have you. Uh, but I seem to want to speak to her more frequently. I speak to my sister, who doesn't live that far away, about 70 miles, but it's through L.A., so it's the same kind of situation yeah. you had. I'm, I'm down south, and, you know, through L.A. means that, that 60, 70 miles could take three hours. Three hours one way oh, yeah. and longer the other you, way. You could fly there as fast as you right. could drive there. Yeah. But but my sister and I probably now speak, if not once a month, maybe once every six or seven weeks to catch up. Uh, and so I think that part of what we're experiencing now is that since we are getting older and there's going to be some inevitability that within the groups of people that we know, whether they're relatives or friends, whether right. they're nearby or moved away, unless they're adjacent in the, a local town, the chances are you don't see them in person that much. Maybe we ought to pick up the damn phone or send an email and, <laughs> and communicate so that it's, it's not seven years between. Your, it's just like yesterday we're catching up. You could, yeah, it, you're exactly right. Don't don't wait for, gosh, it's just like yesterday. Yeah. Do it now. And by the way, I and think it will be. One, and it will one, be one, yesterday. I'll give you one more wonderful example. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Linda, uh, mom had three sisters. And they're, uh, I think they're, at least on the, the one side of the family, everybody's gone except for the, the one who was the youngest, who Linda happened to have been, uh, I think, uh, the, uh, 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 what, what's the little girl that works on the, the island, throws flowers and stuff like that. At a wedding, she was at her wedding. She was the flower oh, girl. Okay. The flower girl. Oh, flower, flower girl. girl. Oh, I got. Right. I got you. But for many years, they didn't speak that often. But it came to the point where all the other sisters were gone, and Linda probably speaks to her at least once a month now. And That's she's right. back east. Uh, uh, I don't want to give her name, but uh, her sisters back. Her aunt's back east, and they just have wonderful long conversations. Yeah. Uh, about family, about just current things that are going on. And uh, I know that she looks forward to it. In fact, the fact that she doesn't get to her to five or six weeks uh, now, and it only started about two or three years ago. Uh, and it's yeah. a wonderful thing. So I, I think that's you're sort of expressing something that's in that area that may, maybe there is there is plenty of time if you pick up the phone. Or you well, it's, it, that's the thing. It always seems like there's plenty of time until all of a sudden there's no time. Right. And as wonderful as it can be when you have a reunion and you get back together after a long period of time, and as wonderful as it can seem like it's only yesterday since we talked, really we need to reach out more. We need to um, coordinate, con contact, um, and touch base with each other much more often. Uh, and it's it's a, uh, what do they call that, outreach? It's a positive um, thing that we have to do. We can't wait for somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. So I wish everybody love, and uh, uh, God bless John Carter, who's my uh, cousin's husband and his wonderful family. They put together a beautiful memorial. Um, but let's not wait. Let's, let's get in touch with everybody we love and know. Uh, and I'm thinking of high school and college friends and you know what? Pick up the phone. Call somebody out of the blue if necessary. It's a, it's a way to enrich our lives. Amen to that. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.